often meant that uh, women who were committed lesbians would sometimes meet uh, heterosexual women or bisexual women um, who weren't committed to lesbianism as, as a way of life, but who were interested in sexual experimentation, just uh, trying it on or taking advantage of, of, of this free, free spirit of Harlem in the 1920s. Um, they, uh, they often Vitality that they thought they saw in black. 
and to reach into areas of their own psyches to discover and act on desires that they might have suppressed elsewhere. But the, uh, the songs that they heard in the Harlem nightclubs really didn't do much to foster the love of lesbianism as uh, the, the concept of lesbianism as a love that did not speak its name. The, uh, the image in those blues songs wasn't always was always very exciting, and, uh, sort of funky and, and delicious. It was often um, very assertive. Um, there's one that was uh, very famous at the time and has since been um, recorded by a, a lesbian feminist singer, I think it was Chris Williamson. It was originally report, recorded by Ma Rainey in 1928. It was called Prove It On Me Blues. It's a fascinating song because the, the singer there sort of toys with her audience. She, she implies that uh, she really is a, a lesbian, uh, that she's interested only in women, but she, she insists that until she's caught in the act, no one can prove anything about her. It's, a, it's really sort of a, a song of um, lesbian pride at the same time that it recognizes the, the social stigmatization of lesbians. Let me um, read the lyrics to you. I wish I could sing. It's much better than the song. They say I do it. Ain't nobody caught me. Sure gotta prove it on me. Went out last night with a crowd of my friends. There must have been women because I don't like no men. It's true I wear a collar and a tie. Like to watch while the women pass by. They say I do it. Ain't nobody caught me. They sure gotta prove it on me. Wear my clothes just like a fan. Talk to the girls just like any old man. Because they say I do it, ain't nobody caught me, they sure got to prove it on me. It was um, originally released by a, a, a race record uh, company, a company uh, called Paramount, and I found a very interesting uh, advertisement for it in the Chicago Defender. Uh, it was sort of an illustrated advertisement. It was a picture of uh, a plump black woman who looked very much like Ma Rainey. She was wearing a man's hat and, uh, and a tie vest and, and jacket, but she was also wearing um, a skirt and high heels. And I understand from um, a few informants that I've been able to, uh, to contact who were in Harlem in the 1920s that that was the usual dress for butch lesbians. They, they weren't able, didn't feel free to, uh, to wear pants, so they would wear drag from the waist up and uh, traditional women's clothes from the waist. Anyway, in this picture, um, the, uh, the uh, butch lesbian, perhaps Ma Rainey, is talking to uh, two entranced feminine flappers, and then in the distance, observing them, there's a policeman. <coughs> and then the, the copy really tries to pique the potential buyer's uh, salacious interest by hinting at the uh, possible autobiographical nature of the material. Uh, the copy says, what's all this? Scandal, maybe so, but you wouldn't have thought it of Ma Rainey. But look at that cop watching her. What does it all mean? Well, Paramount apparently um, thought that um, that the potential buyer would know what it all meant and would want to buy the, the record just for, for that reason, would be excited by the implication. I found uh, similar songs of lesbian pride uh, in the blues of the 1920s. There's one, for example. 